Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Knowledge Hub session. Uh, up until now, we have focused on a lot of new technologies, learning principles of aerodynamics, and many other technical things. Today's session is actually really important considering that we do need to communicate all the technical knowledge and um, work that we do. Even in the marathon, a, Q, a critical component is putting out a presentation or a demonstration of the prototype you build. And with today's session, we we'll focus on that. How do you effectively communicate the idea that you have? How do you present it in the best possible way? Um, to do that, we have a mental change from the state of Karnataka, Miss Pooja Salwan. She'll be she's a coach um, who works with different students in her ATL and otherwise, and trains them to become better communicators. And in today's session, she'll help you do that. Um, so, without further ado, ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much, Varya, for your introduction. Uh, I will just present my screen, and yeah. uh, then we'll go from there. Absolutely. So my question to the audience before we begin is, what do you think when you're in front of audience? Um, you can put the questions in the chat. I can read them out, or you can raise your hand, and I can bring you up on the screen, whatever you prefer. Just few thoughts. That will be great. Um, someone says the topic I need to talk about. Okay. Playing uh, my content in my mind. Yeah. Who amongst you forgets when you come in front of the audience or you are nervous or your face is all red or you think you are not good butterflies enough? Butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> yeah, you have butterflies in your stomach. So these are a few of the you know, reasons we all have, which we feel that, you know, we are not good or we are scared to present in front of the audience. A lot of times I'm like, oh, I'm not good enough or why would they want to listen to me? And this happens to a lot of us, to the best of the speakers as well. So you're not alone. Good morning, everyone. My name is Pooja Salwan, and uh, we will talk about how to communicate effectively and present smartly. Things we will focus on are four. How to be confident, ways to overcome fear, structure your speech, and presentation skills. So all these are very important when you're doing hackathons, you're doing marathons. Uh, all these things uh, you have to know because you might have the best product, but if you're not able to convert the audience into what you have got on the screen, uh, it is no good. So that's why it is important. A lot of us do a lot of research, right? What kind of product we are giving or how we make the product. So we focus a lot on the content, but the delivery, is also very important. Uh, who can tell me how much importance should be given to body language? Varya, can you please read out the answers for me? Yeah, I'll read them out as they come. I think people are still typing. OK. Give it a wild guess, guys. Let us think how much of your body language or your facial expressions are important when you are presenting. Um, one of the most important thing. It's yeah. very important. That's the next um, comment I have. Yeah, can you give me a number? Yeah, maybe we can do it in terms of percentage. Would be lovely. Let's, let's like, do a percentage. Yeah. So, uh, Right now, it's still qualitative. Body language is the most important. No numbers yet. Yes. So body language is the most important we've established. But still, we don't focus. How many of you have practiced your speech, your presentation, at least 30 times before you have presented? But you will probably uh, you know, spend 30 days to put the content together. 
so a study has been done and they found out that words the importance in the overall presentation is 7% 38% is tone of voice and 55% is body language or facial expressions it's a huge number not to say that the words are not important or content is not important that is equally important but what is more important is how you present so that's what the focus is going to be today and i will obviously be focusing on words as well because that's the basis on which the body or the building will stand right golden rules of speech there are five golden rules of speech and uh, keeping each one of them in mind is going to help you put your speech together first is speak at measured speech if i start speaking too fast will you be able to understand you will have to run with me you see if i speak too fast you will your body your mind will not be able to register what i said and you will miss out the important things if i speak too slow you will think that you will go off to sleep or you will start looking at your phone or you will probably switch me off so it is very important to be on a speed which you think will be comfortable for your audience if you are a speaker of a different language your accent might be a problem for the audience if you think that then by all means go slow so that they understand you but otherwise please be on a normal speed and if you will record yourself while practicing you will come to know where you can become better second is body language but what the most important part and i will talk about it in just a minute word choice and vocabulary again that is something very important how you say it how you string the words together is very important what is the sequence of the words that's also very important and what vocabulary can you should have an easy vocabulary if you can say speed do not try to use a word which will so congruated that people don't understand it okay engage your audience which actually means that a form of body language which is eye contact is one way of engaging your audience second is asking questions to your audience there are small little things which will help the audience get engaged if you are not a somebody who uses humor well do not try to force it on your audience they will see through it so keep it easy keep your authentic natural self there and the audience will feel engaged and my most important and my personal favorite is practice if we practice very well it will serve us well even if your speech is or your content is not great but if you practiced it well and then you deliver it it can make a big difference so uh body language is what i'm going to touch upon briefly there is eye contact so when you are standing in front of audience uh, in the real world uh, not of not online i'll tell you about online as well so make pockets of audience so let's say if it's a large uh, place then try to make pockets of nine so that you you look at one pocket and then you go on the other pocket and by that you will have covered everybody if you're online look in the camera because that is very important the audience is looking at you and if you look at the camera it feels like that the audience is looking or you are looking at the audience do not look uh on your sheet on your notes look in the camera hand gestures are another important technique so if i have to say i need something very small you as an audience see this cue and my words together they connect in your brain and it helps you to speak to to, to think that what i'm speaking is good but at the same time if i say i need something small this doesn't go with what i'm saying this is showing large huge which i'm not saying 
I am saying small, so it has to be, be small. Uh, a lot of times, culturally, some people say yes like this, some people say like this. So you have to be very careful how you're using your head to show what. Body posture and stance, again, you might see that somebody is standing or stooping low. You know, there are people who stand like this. If you can see me, their, their body is hunched. There are people who stand straight. A lot of you right now will be sitting like this or this or this. Please roll your shoulders back, sit straight. That is something which always helps you to feel confident. And when somebody else sees you, that person also feels that you're confident. Another important aspect is facial expressions. And what you are saying is reflecting on your face. Only then the audience will be able to absorb it better. So just like theater or dance have navrasas, you can use those expressions in your delivery style. If you're angry, then look angry. If you're happy, look happy. And smiling, you can't go wrong with it. If you're smiling, the audience feels more attached to you. They empathize better with you. Anywhere, even if it's saying a hi, nowadays somebody might say that I have a mask. How does an audience, how does another person see me? If you would have noticed that you see at somebody's eyes and you can say that person is smiling or not. So please smile genuinely and the other person will get your thoughts, your love there. Okay. So looking professional, you have to keep in mind a few things. When you're presenting, logistics is one of the most important thing. Do not have anything on the background when you're presenting. So let's say you are in a house where it's a small house and you have too many things going on. So use a Zoom, if it's Zoom, use Zoom's virtual uh, background. That's a great thing which Zoom has done. You don't want to come across as a presenter whose virtual, uh, whose background is like that, right? And please pause before a major point. But long pauses are a no-no. A lot of times you would have said that we all say, mm, er, or so, uh, you know. All these words are crutches, which we use so that we can think in our minds. Try to avoid them. And if you have a logical way of presenting, you will not be using them. Another way which you can make your presentation good is while, uh, while you're practicing, read aloud. Take any book and read aloud. That will help you to weed out any difficult words, to make your uh, expressions better, that tone of voice you will get, and also the way you're saying things, your voice will start becoming better. And this is another important thing. You might think that the audience will laugh at me, but on the contrary, audience wants you to succeed. They are devoting you, their own time to your presentation because they want to get, get something out of it, which means that they want you to succeed. So please give it to the audience. Practice so much that the audience feels it's worth their time to be here. And after the presentation is done, smile and do not rush off. Enjoy the applaud you get from the audience. Just enjoy it. Stand there for a second, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and then move. So there are two main elements for speaking effectively, what you say and how you say it. We have covered a little bit of how you say it. Body language is the most important and tone of voice. Now I'm going to say, uh, talk about what you say. So this thing is very important for all of you when you are presenting. So I saw a lot of uh, PPTs from the kids 
fantastic innovations done but i as an audience do not know why we actually need it what is the use so so please tell the problem first it is very important that when you begin you tell the problem how many of you uh, please say yes or no when you are presenting you have written what the problem is so not the problem statement is but what problem are you solving not the solution but the problem you are solving have you done in your presentations uh varya uh, i i am not able to okay yes oh great so kamlesh is saying that uh she has or he has used uh this approach where they tell what the problem is so it is very important that we frame the problem it can be by story a personal story or something you have seen so let's say you're making something for the farmers so is it that you have experienced it or is it that you've seen farmers struggling with it give a little story that always helps everyone to understand where you're coming from what is the context and that is very important for everybody even when you see stories let us say you've seen harry potter you've seen other movies where the director first tells what is happening then he or she introduces a complexity and then they solve the complexity it's the same thing you frame the problem then you give the solution to that problem you have to give ppt you have to give videos you can do whatever but do not start with the solution i know you're all in a rush to give the solution first but that is the wrong way and you have to do it in a time frame given to you if it is 2 minutes well so be it make it short if it is 10 minutes given to you make it in that frame why why would you say that i will try to fit in everything i have which is worth 10 minutes in the 2 minutes so slot i have been given you have to cut it down the more concise you are the better the chances of the audience actually listening to you and when you give the solution maximum 3 points of what you want to solve and how you want to solve it not more than 3 points you can elaborate on those 3 points but you can't have more than 3 points do not try to solve the problem of the whole world just that particular problem and solution for that only and when you give the conclusion you have to know who the audience is and what's the call to action is it that you want the audience to give you fund you give you monies or you know they they have to agree with what you are saying is it persuasive enough that the audience says okay this is what uh, we like and we will buy it so you have to give them something give them the benefits and then ask them to do something that is when the audience will get involved okay this is from a uh, cars uh, somebody had done a ppt in which they were talking about the cars so these are the exterior of the super car exteriors so that's i'm assuming important thing for the exteriors if you will look at it there are so many things right there are almost 12 things which they have written as an advantage or a benefit of these exteriors but do you think you will remember this all it is very difficult for all of us to remember all of this and what if i had given this do you think now it is easy for you guys to remember so four things four advantages and that's what is easy for the audience to remember 
please remember do not give very basic uh headlines give the most important one liner if you have to which some will summarize what is written in the ppt in that slide do not give a very basic generic headline that becomes very very tough for somebody to understand what about this how many of you have ppts which look like this well again this is a very confusing ppt and this is not a good way of presenting at all so concentrate on one message per slide and do not use more than six points there is a 10 20 30 rule it is 10 slides max 20 minutes max and the font should be 30 minutes if you can nail these three things your presentation will be very good because your presentation is not the ppt which you have on the presentation is you how you are speaking what you are saying so this presentation is only for you to have a uh, um you know it is for you to get idea but more than that if you have practiced everything will be here and you can use your brain to get that information out and please do not use white background that's in today's world is a complete no no research has been done and they say that if you use a non white background even if it's a gray a black a brown and you write with a contrasting colors so don't go brown and brown light brown brown maybe yellow black maybe white so try to use contrasting uh, backgrounds also um, if uh, if you don't know there are two or three websites which i use to take presentation slides from there as the basis and then i start making my presentations on that so you can go to slidesco.com or slideshare.com these are the two uh, resources i use to uh, do my presentations okay uh, i think we have finished faster than i had expected that will give us a lot more time for the quiz uh, for the questions so who can uh, bara is it is it okay if these guys can speak up yeah uh, they can unmute they can raise their hands and i can bring them up on the stage okay who can tell me what are the elements of body language um you can either put it in the chat or you can just raise your hand and i'll bring you up on stage um kamlesh says hand animation okay um anand says expressions okay okay guys there are there six elements of body language um nikhil says eye contact hand gestures head movement body wow. posture facial expression and smile Great. um kamlesh adds i think using stage using the stage during the presentation um serial rights expressing uh the patient is in hands eye contact face, facial expression i see someone has raised their hand let me call them up hello hello yes uh thanks puja good one uh the main body language what i with my experience i can find uh, tell you is one is the confidence on the subject what is presenting that itself will give you his body language perfect if he is not confident on the subject what he is talking then remaining things will uh, uh, give him a problem once he is confident all other things will follow it to him and second thing to what i exactly like you is the before going to a subject if you tell a story if it's a, a small incident 
this will really attract the people to look at you. So these are the main things which is required during a presentation. To draw attention, you have to present in a such a way that they attract, they get attracted by your body or your presentation or dress or something like that. Great, Pratap. Yeah, you are very right that if somebody has not prepared well, it will show in their body. Their body language will not be that confident. I totally agree with you. And yes, if you can put in a story in the beginning before you start a presentation, that will make the audience sit up and think, what are you going to say? And they will engage with you. They'll be more... Uh, you know, there will be more information to you and what you want to say. So, so thank you so much for your uh, uh, comments. Uh, all of them are just bang on. Yes, eye contact is very important. And uh, somebody said stage. So when you are saying you to stage, don't keep hopping around. Because then the audience, if I keep doing this, Audience is not able to figure out whether to look at me, whether to listen to my voice, right? So please stand some, for some time and then you can move. But that should be your body, which is deliberate, which is moving, that you are have practiced so much that you know that this is the right move. And, you know, with online, we just have to be on, on one place. We cannot keep moving. So that is one thing which you will have to keep in mind while you are presenting online. Uh, another thing is that as an audience, sometimes you'll see that the speaker does this and then goes back. That's again a no-no because that is showing that you are closed. So when you see somebody like this, this is another hand gesture movement, body posture, that's a closed mind. That you're not listening to me, I don't agree with what you say. So be careful of how you're projecting yourself. You might be wanting to say something, so show your hand open so that you are saying to the audience, to the person who's talking to you, that you're actually taking in what he or she is saying. Kamlesh is asking, what about notes in hand and referencing them? Uh, yes, you can have notes in hand, but maybe just look at it once, take a cue and speak, and then the next one. But don't keep looking because that disengages the audience. So try to minimize the use of notes or handouts. And hands in, yes, Tipesh, hands in a pocket is a complete no-no. You, you can either stand with your hands on the side. Since the hand gesture is important, you'll be moving your hands, which will make it anyways easier for you to use them. Or you can stand like this. Uh, keep your hand like this in the back and then talk. When you're talking to a smaller audience, a one-to-one. -one. Because that shows confidence and self-esteem. But if the hand is here, if you see in the back, if it is here, uh, on your elbow, then it is showing that I am very angry or I'm very frustrated. So be careful of how your hand is. Okay, my next question. What are the elements of persuasive speech? Guys, same applies. Either put it in the chat or raise your hand and I can bring you up. Persuasive speech is very important because that is what the content is, how you will write your content. Um, simple and to the point. Okay, but I gave three things uh, what all you have to do in a persuasive speech. If you want, I can go back. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, okay. Um, the page sir says seeing is believing. Hence, demonstrating a product is better than just talking about it. Um, according to him, that's being persuasive. Um, yeah, that's being persuasive, uh, Dipesh. I agree. But until you tell me what the problem is, I will see your solution. But I do not know what the solution is doing for me. How it is of advantage to me. or what am i losing if i am not using your solution so if you have to present you have to tell me what the problem is and that can be through a story or that can be through ideas so that i can totally empathize and understand and be on the same wavelength as you that this is the issue which i am going to solve and then if you give the solution so it's not about talking solution can be that you give a video and that is it the consumer will understand it but you have to give a reference point why you giving me this solution is very important for me um the painter say sequence of word and basically the format of writing um is important for persuasive speech a uh, sequence of words and essay word uh, can uh, dipendra can you elaborate what you mean by sequence of words and essay word okay so yeah as i said earlier also that okay ya yeah, lalita problem and solution and then the conclusion please do give a end to your uh ppt it is very important that you give an end uh for me it was the quiz because i wanted to see how much of you that has been retained because i uh it was only one hour and i was trying to rush everything up and uh, i ended it in 30 minutes instead of 45 minutes which had been allotted to me so yes uh so concluding is very important how this is helpful is important and then you give the conclusion which will help you which will help the audience retain the things you have told them okay uh my next one is what percent of focus on body language should be given yeah 55% great kamlesh you have been hearing my speech well so i'm really glad uh another thing which i want to do with all of you is hand gestures can one of you show me how you will do a hand gesture war for this much only this much okay or um so many people came for the what for the conference can you say that using that using your hand and your face that it was a surprise for you guys and uh, you used <coughs> you show it using hand gesture and facial expression you know since everybody is on off video i am not able to see anybody and doing this is very difficult that way guys please feel free to raise your hand i'll bring you on up or just use the chat if you're at a bad internet zone you don't need to uh, only we do if you want to raise your hand you don't necessarily need to turn on your video you can just speak as well they will have to for varia for this they have to switch on the video because oh, yeah. uh, otherwise yeah. you won't be able to see the hand gesture and facial expression come on guys be a sport 
um pratap writes clap for the audience open your hands wide okay i'll do that <laughs> so pratap i am hoping now that i am clapping for the audience maybe you can uh, you can perform for us show me how hand gesture and facial expression is done okay i think nobody wants to offer maybe i should call upon dipesh he is the moc from karnataka yes dipesh can you be my ally and help me over here dipesh sir if you could just raise your hand i'll bring you up okay um guys these things are very important uh when you are using it them in yes thank you dipesh can you all please clap for dipesh unmute yourself for a minute okay dipesh can we have you use hand gestures facial expressions and say that only this much you want can you see me i don't know oh i can't see you varya i can't see him can you see him no no sir you need to turn on your we yeah we can see oh, you now wait we can okay see. so can you say like this so yeah so see there are two connotations i was saying only this much i want and you are thinking only this much i want so there are two different things only this much i want is can be this much only this much i want i mean you something you like i mean mangoes are in season so somebody can say i i can i'm okay with this much only right so uh, everything can be is expressed in different ways and hand gestures facial expressions are very important can you say he is his height is only this much like this yeah. yeah so what i'm trying to you know hint here is that hand gestures really help us when we are talking and when you have a presentation to give that um, when you i say you that means all of us uh we if we use hand gestures it becomes easier for the audience to understand it wires quickly in their brain and please it's very important that we do not cram our ppt because that is something which i saw in a lot of uh, presentations uh, given by the kids and that is something if they can avoid that will be great they have to remember something if they practice as pratap had said if they practice a lot they'll be able to remember okay is there any other question anybody wants to ask okay pooja i have a question here okay so if i uh, remember one speech by steve jobs when he talked about um, apple uh, macbook where he uh, demonstrated the macbook in such a way th so that it uh, 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 shows very clearly that how thin it is or how uh, uh, kind of um, very lightweight it is so what he does is that he uses a envelope and he puts that uh, apple macbook in a envelope and he also compares those features with a competitor whether it is hp or some other brand very smartly so what i felt that until unless we see some things happening in front of us it kind of doesn't register too too well because audio visual aids are fine but until unless something happens in front of our eyes and it is practically demonstrated it doesn't get resist so what your totally, thoughts i totally agree with you dipesh if you can do away with the presentation even that is good nobody has to actually present i have a ppt uh, to present you are the presentation 
PPT is only for help to you to give you some pointers of things so that you don't forget, you know, mentioning any point. But in the bigger scheme of things, if you just have, if you have your uh, product in front of you, give what the problem is and then give the solution. Do not start with a solution because that is what I noticed with the, the presentation given by the kids that they start directly with the solution. They are not telling me actually what is happening. They say that we did primary research, secondary research. I'm not interested as an audience. You can talk about it later, that this is how I came to the conclusion. And that is the reason we have developed this prototype or we have developed this solution for you. So, so you, if you can do everything live, that is fantastic. That is more than enough. So you are right. I mean, the way Steve Jobs you know, showed us everything, that was his PPT of 100 words would not have said what he did by putting that thing in envelope, that it is so thin and so light. Yes. Anybody else? How to make, uh, Anand is asking, how to make the communication effective for school children? Students from class 6 to class 10 work in ATL. Their group age group is 11 to 15. Uh, so Anand, all these things which I spoke in my presentation are very important. To begin with, the student should be able to write in the sequence of problem, solution, and conclusion. And then they should practice a lot. And whatever they are doing, if they are reading books aloud at home, you can't do everything at school. So you have to ask them to read books aloud, practice a lot. And these few things will help them. They have to know what the body language is, how to work the body language, how to use eye contact. A lot of kids, if you say hi to them, they're like, hello. Well, I am talking to you. Do not look at the floor and say hello to me or they will try to hide behind their parent and say hello to us. Well, that is not the way. A confident kid will say hello, will smile, and look you in the eye. A very small little things, but these are all very important things. So starting from very young age, the kids can start working on the communication. And it is not that you know only once they're in class six, we have to start. That is the time you have to polish them. But please, if you can make a difference in the school, start early. Ask the teachers to make them read aloud. Reading aloud is one of the best ways to do it. You know, they fix their tone, their voice becomes stronger, and they are more confident with the difficult words. And that's what we want. Okay, anybody else? Uh, Anand, have I answered your question? If not, you can just add any follow-ups you have on the chat there or raise your hand. Okay, he says you've answered it. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, anybody else has any question? Uh, Pooja, I have one last question. Yes, Tipesh. So one of the important aspects of communication is written communication. And often I see that people write mails in a very uh, disastrous way. So what is your advice on that? Uh, Again, uh, that's another uh, forum, uh, another question for another forum, uh, Dipesh. Emails, uh, people have to, in schools, teachers do work with the kids to do uh, email communication nowadays. So it is something which comes out of practice. And also the kids need to start writing lots. Creative writing is becoming a very important aspect of how you write. We have been taught in the ICSC, CBSC way where we look at the question, we answer it. But writing essays was an important way. Now that essays have to be concise. It's like a paragraph you have to write. You have to try to write everything concisely. Again, following the elements of problem, solution, conclusion. These things are going to become very important. And email communication, a lot many times people go wrong. And we have to focus on that. And if the kids write what the problem they're talking about, and when then they're giving the solution, or they're framing, if it's a, 
let's not look at that uh, email in that way so if a teacher has asked something then the kid has to come to the point and say there are there is something called five w's and one h they have to use those elements to answer it not everything can come, come slotted in problem conclusion solution and conclusion five w's are why what who where when and then how if they can answer this that will help another format is whys go to the root cause why did somebody do that if the answer is there why did this happen so if you do five layers of whys you will have a better idea of how you will be answering an email i hope uh, i have answered your question to some extent and if you want we can discuss that offline dipesh yeah thank you that's a help to me also okay great okay uh pratap yeah best communication you find for infant baby but infant babies are not presenting right now so we have to talk about kids who are presenting and that will help more infant babies because they think they are the world that is why they communicate best we as as we grow we start becoming more conscious of people around us what will somebody think who will say what my parents would say oh look at that person he or she is doing so well look at your cousin so when we get compared we start becoming more conscious of what we are saying or what we are doing so that is why our communication skills start becoming different from what we were in infants okay uh anybody else has any question yeah do we have any final questions otherwise we can wrap up the session for the day mm. okay great i don't think we have any more questions for today um thank you pooja for the brilliant session um i think it has helped uh, yes you are amazing uh, i think it has helped all of us understand communication a lot better and i hope to see that um, in the future this uh, knowledge hub session helps a lot of our students in the different competitions and different events that they participate in they are able to take techniques and um skills that you have shared and apply them in their application submissions as well as their work um in school so thank you and hope you all have a good sunday bye thank you thank you so much everyone it was great interacting with you guys and i'm hoping that uh, some of it would register and you will be able to pass it on to your uh, students or your colleagues and it will help you further thank you